Alright, welcome back to another episode of the Camo Cook. It's been a while since I've came at you. So, uh, today we're going to do something a little bit different. Got you in my kitchen here. We're actually not going to do a wild game today. We're actually... It's coming into winter in Wisconsin. The one thing in winter in Wisconsin means is soups. You want something hearty, filling, starchy, something to really warm you up on the cold days. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make you my potato soup. It's really simple, really easy, and here it goes. First of all, you're going to want to start off with a fairly large stock pot. I'm going to get just a, like a medium, medium high temperature. I'm going to start out sautéing. I got about two cups of chopped, fairly small chopped white or yellow onions. I got two cups of small diced celery. You want to use your ingredients at fairly small because you don't want really big chunks. You want to be able to take a scoop and get all the ingredients onto one spoon. And if you got too big of chunks, you're going to just, you know, get one scoop that's all celery, one scoop that's all onion. And I don't really want that. You want to be able to taste the whole soup at once. So, uh, let's get that sauteing. A little bit of olive oil. Well, I use a, an olive oil vegetable oil blend. Get a little bit of taste of olive oil without that low scorch point. And some garlic. You can use fresh garlic, but I just like going and picking up the chopped garlic. A lot easier, a lot more convenient. With two tablespoons of the chopped garlic. And then season with a little salt and pepper. I keep salt and pepper pre-mixed all times in my house. Makes it fairly convenient. And you're going to want to lightly saute that. Probably about 5-6 minutes just till it starts softening. The onions start clarifying. You want to keep it stirring because the one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to burn the garlic. Don't brown the garlic because then it will turn it better. And there's one thing you know nobody likes, it's burnt garlic. Burnt garlic is just... <laughs> so, uh, yeah, make sure your garlic ain't burning when you start getting a good saute. When those onions start clarifying. Take your potatoes, I got about four cups of potatoes, probably about a half inch diced. Once again, not too big, because you don't want to just get an overwhelming spoonful of just potato. You want to be able to taste everything in the dish. So get your potatoes in there, give that a stir, get it all sautéed. Now you can use baby red potatoes in this, you can leave the skin on, you can leave the skin on in the regular potatoes. I'm just using russets this time. I have baby red potatoes but I just decided to go with this. But uh, baby red potatoes with the skin on works great for this recipe too so if you want to try it. Feel free to experiment with this recipe. Now you're going to want to let this saute for about probably another five minutes just to get the potatoes starting to warm up. But I got some fresh basil here because, well, I'm always growing basil. Got some fresh parsley here. Fresh herbs are always awesome in the soup. A little bit of oregano. All I just happen to have on me is some dried stuff. About a tablespoon of that. Give that a good mix. Continue with your sautéing. Once that starts sautéing pretty good and the potatoes start heating up, it's going to take a while for the potatoes to cook, but that's alright. Then I'm going to add some chicken stock. I'm going to add about a quart of chicken stock to this. Just go ahead and dump it in. You can use the base. You can use this uh, chicken stock like this. I'm going to turn the heat up here. All right, got about a quart of chicken stock in. And you're just going to want to bring that up to a boil. Now the one essential ingredient you should always have in potato soup 
bacon. So while this is coming up to a boil, it's going to take about 5-10 minutes to actually bring up to a boil. I threw a lid on, let it simmer, let the potatoes cook down, take out some bacon. And we'll just give that a good chop. Now once again you want to chop this up pretty small too. No need in having huge pieces of bacon. You can put a lot of it in there. There's no need to have huge pieces of it. Doesn't need to be perfect, just a good rough chop. All right, and then when you get the bacon all chopped up, you're gonna to wanna to grab a saute pan, turn on a burner here, and get the bacon cooking. Should have plenty of time to let that boil to actually cook your bacon down here. buy our bacon in bulk, ends in pieces, it's a little bit cheaper, plus, well, you get more out of it. And when you're chopping it up like this, it really doesn't matter if you get long, pretty pieces or not, so, just a little tip. Mmm, bacon. Okay, then when you get your bacon done, you're going to want to strain it out. Now here's my little tip, my little secret for doing these kind of soups, especially a lot of cream based soups. Chowder is another thing I like to do this with. Save your bacon grease. Fat equals flavor. Bacon grease, that's where all the flavor's at. So you got that strained out, keeping all your nummy bacon grease. Let's see what this is doing. Yep, we got a boil here. So what I'm going to do here is after I've got my bacon all nice and strained out, make sure the majority of the grease is out of it. I'm just going to dump that right in. Give it a mix. And then I'm going to add about a quart, maybe a little light, depending on how big of a batch you are. Here I'm going to do a quart of heavy whipping cream. A lot of people might go through and use milk, but it doesn't make it near as rich if you use the nice, fatty, heavy whipping cream. Uh, yeah. So after you got a nice boil and simmer for a little bit, just Dump that right into there. Throw a lid on her and just let her simmer for a cup for another about 10 minutes. You don't want to bring it up to a boil too quick. You don't want to boil your cream. You don't want to burn it to the bottom. You don't want it boiling over. So I'm just going to keep it at a medium, medium low heat. And then we're going to work on a roux. A roux is a mixture normally of flour and butter. It's used to thicken soups and sauces. But, since there's bacon in the soup, the butter is used as a fat, as a binder to the flour when you're making your roux. I'm going to use bacon grease. Works just as good. I don't have quite enough bacon grease here for the roux that I need, so I'm going to add a little bit of butter. Now roux, you're going to want to use a 50-50 mix by weight of butter or your fat, your oil, your butter, bacon grease, and flour. So if you use one pound of flour, you're going to want one pound of your fat. So I'm going to get that butter melting in the bacon grease.
You want to make sure that it's mixed up real good. You don't want no big chunks of flour in your roux. You want it a consistent, kind of dumpling-like texture. And it should be enough for this soup, I hope, anyways. That'll work. Now I like to use a roux in these recipes because it adds so much more flavor if you're lazy, if you don't want to go through the complicated step of actually making a roux yourself. Uh, you can just use cornstarch, but this adds so much more flavor with the bacon grease in here. The bacon grease is going to permeate all through this soup and give you a lovely bacon flavor. And who doesn't like bacon? This is coming pretty close. Now the one thing you got to remember about potato soups is potatoes are extremely starchy. So uh, the longer you cook the potatoes down, the thicker your soup's going to get. The potatoes itself is going to thicken your soup, so you don't need to thicken it. If, it. if you put the roux in there, your cornstarch or whatever, and it's not quite thick enough, don't worry. Just let it simmer a little bit. Let the starches from the potatoes come out in the soup, and your soup will thicken up nicely. Okay, when your soup's had a chance to simmer for say about 20 minutes with the cream you're going to want to check to make sure the potatoes are done everything else should be good the veggies don't take too long but it's the potatoes that kind of take take a while you want to grab a fork find yourself out a nice potato check the doneness yeah man It's alright to have a little bit of crunch. It can be nice and soft, but you just don't want them raw. These potatoes are good. Perfectly done. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn up the heat a little bit, and I'm going to bring it up to a boil. Remember, don't boil it too quick. You don't want to boil it over. Make sure you keep an eye on it. When you're boiling cream, cream tends to foam up, and you can boil over and really make a mess of your stove top. So you gotta make sure you're standing over the top of it when you want to bring it up to a boil. It's advisable to stir it every now and then to make sure you're not scorching the cream to the bottom of the pan. Because if you burn the cream that'll also tend to screw with the taste of your soup and you don't want to do that. So that's pretty close to coming up to a boil here. You can see it's starting to roll. I'm going to turn the heat down just a little bit. I'm going to break out my whisk. Now you want to add the roux fairly slowly, little pieces at a time. Get a good whisk going. Probably not going to use all of this roux because like I said the potatoes tend to thicken the soup itself. Potatoes are a really starchy vegetable. Most root vegetables are. So you want to add it slowly in a little chunks because you don't want to bite into a big old roux ball when you're eating your soup. Get it to your desired consistency. And you can leave it a little looser if you want. You can tighten it up good. That's going to be good right there. Yeah, maybe a little more. Perfect. Like I said, the potatoes are going to thicken it, so if you leave it a little bit on the runny side to begin with, don't worry, it'll be alright. Just keep stirring to make sure that roux gets totally incorporated into the soup. I'm going to turn my heat off. I don't really need that anymore. And voila, soup is done. Now you can add a little more salt and pepper if you wish. Pepper, I would recommend using white pepper. It's a little bit better as far as cream soups go. You want to use white pepper. Broth soups, you're going to want to use black pepper. But, and you can also play around with the recipe. Add a few other vegetables. It's great if you add some corn, corn kernels into it. Makes it kind of like a potato corn chowder. That's great too. But otherwise, have fun, enjoy the recipe, hope you like it. If you like it, come like my, my Facebook page, 
www.facebook.com slash camelcook. Check us out. Check out our other videos. Hopefully you like them too. See you later.